Hello everybody, welcome to my in-depth kinda guide for a pretty newish Gorilla Tag fan game or Lethal Company fan game, maybe a little bit of both. Animal Company. As you can probably assume, it's like uh, Gorilla Tag and Lethal Company combined. And it's fun, so I'm making a guide on it so that other people can have fun playing it and not be confused. So here's the basics. This is the spawn. Uh, it's pretty safe in here except for other players that love exploding other players in public lobbies, you know, all of that good stuff. Out there is where you gotta go to actually get to the good meat of the game, where you get all the loot and see all the monsters. First, let's cover this little watch. This watch is like, well, it tracks your money, your health, how much stuff you have in your backpack, which we don't have a backpack yet, you have to buy one. Uh, it also tracks your channel. Pressing this button also like shows you a little tiny radar which shows enemies. See, this mine is an enemy, so it's a little red dot, and if I had any loot around me, it would show the loot as a little yellow dot. Uh, this right here, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but that's the channel. You can press in the left stick to change the channel. That's uh, basically just the the walkie-talkie channel, so say someone's on channel zero and they speak into the, uh, you know, thing, then if you're also on channel zero, you can hear them. If you want to talk into it, you gotta put your uh, face up to it like this. Just make sure it's green, and that means people on the same channel so you can hear you. This is where you will sell stuff. Uh, we don't have anything to sell, but we will soon-ish, maybe. Got some other stuff to cover before we get to looting. But, yeah. We'll go back there once we get to the looting stuff. These are, uh, the items you can buy, which we will have to get to later. Anyways, the first thing I'm gonna cover are the enemies. Obviously, the landmine right here, that's kind of an enemy. If you step on it, you die. I'm not gonna demonstrate, it's pretty simple. Next up is Red Light Green Light, or The Watcher. This is probably going to be the first enemy you encounter except for the landmine. Following the rules of Red Light Green Light, but go to red. Yep, you're dead. At least if it's red. If you move when it's red, then you're dead. Hey, that rhymed. That's why I said it like that. A tip for these guys is that if you're behind a wall, or like out of their line of sight when they're red, then you can just move freely, even if, you know, they're red. As long as you're out of their line of sight, you can move no matter what color it is. Next up, heading past the Watcher, and coming all the way over here. Our next monster is this bird thing. Most birds have mouths, but this one got an, uh, an exceptionally large one. Anyways, uh, this bird is a guard for the golden egg, which is right in that nest that it's sitting on. The golden egg is the most valuable item in the game, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of finessing to get this golden egg, which I will uh, show you how I do it. So here's how I get the golden egg. Come over here. Make sure you're fast. This thing is fast. I bait it. Nope, I'll bait it. And grab it from the nest. And boom. Now you have it. Once you take the egg, the bird will be in an aggravated state. For forever, basically. Anyway, he's next up. Uh, head out of the bird area and head into this dungeon right here. Let's turn our radar off on. You can see red dots. Here's our next red dot little monster. This guy is, uh, a walking bomb. AKA, totally not the bomb from Mario. As you can see, getting close to it makes it explode. Or, getting close to it makes it start, like, 
kinda ticking, and then it explodes. It is a insta-kill, as I'll show you right here. Yeah, it's an insta-kill, so just... If you want to survive it, just go behind the corner like I did the first time. And as long as you're just behind the corner, behind a wall, out of its explosion radius, you'll be fine. Next up on our list is Armstrong, this big, beefy rock guy. Now, my only advice for this guy is, when he sees you, as you can see, he starts running real fast. So, once you hear footsteps speeding up, run for dear life, because let me just show you how much damage this guy will do to you if he catches up. That's 90% of your health bar. Yep. 90%. So, if you want to survive this guy, just run. Because once he hits you, you're gonna be one shot to pretty much any other enemy until you just recover. Which, by the way, you recover health naturally in this game, so that's nice. It's slow, but you do. For our next entry, we're gonna have to go and enter in this do not enter zone like any smart person would. It's very dark in here. But don't use a flashlight, which I will show you why. Because this is the angler. He wanders around the angler's valley, which is what I call this place. And if he sees a light, he will automatically aggro. Or if you get too close to him. Uh, he does about 40% of your health bar. If you get hit by him, and he attacks relatively slow. It is possible to outspeed him, but it does take a little bit of stamina. I'm saying this all right now, because it's about to get very loud once I aggro him. So he wouldn't be able to hear me if I was trying to tell you this information while he was aggroed. So let me just show you. Okay, so that's what an angler chase might look like. As you can see, he hit me twice, so we're at about 20% health. Now, a little bit of a tip for an uh, angler. As you can tell, since he is attracted by light, you can get pretty damn close to him without him aggroing on you. As long as you don't have your light on. Like right there, got real close to him, and I just slipped on by because I didn't have my light on. And speaking of lights, the second tip is when the angler aggroes because of a light, the angler is uh, aggroed and attracted to the source of the light, not the player that uses the light. So if I attracted to the flashlight, not me. So, if it, if it is a case where you have your flashlight on and you accidentally aggro the angler, just yeet your flashlight all the way out of there and you'll be fine. Anyways, that's just about all for the angler. You can also lure the angler like out into any section of the map, so maybe some troll like lead angler into spawn, so just be wary of that. Alright, so now that we've learned all about the enemies, let's learn all about the items. First up, as you probably saw in the last clip, uh, or for just in general all the stuff on the angler, the flashlight. It's uh, just your normal run-of-the-mill flashlight. It really helps in dark areas like the dungeons, but it's not necessary in the dungeons. If you know how to navigate dungeons well enough and just learn their layout, you don't need a flashlight. But it is useful if you're just like a beginner learning all the stuff. Next up is the backpack, arguably the most important item in the game. This one is essential, basically, no matter what, for having a scavenger in a dungeon. You can press B if you're holding it in your right hand, or Y if you're holding it in your left hand, to open the bag up and just put stuff in there. As you can see, I can reach into your 
I can, I can reach into my back and just like release and now it's on my back. As you can see, the little loot indicator says there's one item in my backpack, which is my flashlight. The backpack can hold 10 items at once, and you can have multiple on you, so you can pretty much hold like 30 items if you bring 3 backpacks with you. It will be a bit hard to manage though if you do that. Anyways, I can then reach into my back again, grab it, open it, and then just pour my flashlight out. Now I have it. Nice. So yeah, that's basically the main stuff about the backpack. Next up is the crowbar. The crowbar can be used either as long arms, which people really seem to like doing for some reason, even though it's not that efficient. As you can see, moving around with it is kind of like wacky. But the other use for it is it can kill monsters, such as... The Watcher in about 20 hits. Also, do not attack the Watcher with the crowbar when it's in the red state. It will aggro. The Armstrong, using a considerable amount of black magic and about 20 hits. That is not recommended. Just run if you see the Armstrong. And, uh, don't- while I'm, uh, here, don't bother using it on the bombs. It's not a good idea. They're just gonna explode. The crowbar also, uh, maybe can kill the bird, but the bird's gonna kill you way faster than you kill it. And it can't kill the angler at all, so don't try it with any of those. Now, if you really want to kill everything in the game, including players, then your grenades are your best shot. Let me just buy like six of these and show you how it works. To activate the grenade, as with any other item that you can activate, just press the upper button of the controller that you're holding it in, and then it releases, and you can throw it, and it goes boom, just like uh, you would expect a grenade to go. The grenade can kill the Watcher, the Bird, thanks for the egg, Armstrong, and probably these grenade guys, but I don't think it would be worth it, because, you know, uh, they're gonna explode anyways. And even the Angler, all with one grenade. By the way, the grenades take 5 seconds to explode after you pull the pin. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six? Okay, maybe six, actually. Sorry, six seconds. Or maybe I'm just counting bad. Whatever. It takes, uh, pretty close to five or six seconds. Maybe, maybe a bit in the middle. Next up are the rockets. You can use these either as arm extenders or as rockets. Activate them. And go flying. That's just about all it does. Pretty useful. And, uh, hold on. I guess if you really, really don't want to come into direct contact with the angler, you can always use the rocket to just rocket over the angler. All the way over here. But it's more efficient and, uh, non costly to just go by the angler without a flashlight. Next up on the list is the tablet. Basically, it's just an enhanced version of your watch. As you can see, it shows all the little red dots. There's the mine. That's not so bad. And if we head over here into a dungeon, as you can see, it displays all the yellow loot dots on the map too. Just in a wider radius. As you can see, if I move over here, my, my watch isn't displaying all the loot, but it is displaying on the tablet. And, ah, see, I don't know if you haven't noticed, if you haven't noticed, I don't know how, but there is also a entire map of, you know, the entire, the entire map on the tablet as well. So, that's pretty useful if you need to find your way around places, too. Next up, we have the floodlight. As you can probably assume, it's like the flashlight, but flood of light. 
If you didn't want to use the flashlight in the angler area, you definitely don't want to use this in the angler area. I mean, just for example, let, let, let's uh, stand. Let's stand all the way back over here. Yeah, say for now. Boom. The aggro's all the way over there. Don't. Let me go. Yeah, he's going over to the light. As, uh, as demonstrated in the tip in the angler section, you know? Yeah, just, just don't use the floodlight when you're near the angler. Just for your own good. Apart from that, uh, when the angler is not nearby, floodlight's pretty good. Next up is the shotgun, coming in at a whopping $10,000. It's a shotgun. It fires shotgun stuff. It also, you need to buy the ammo separately. Kinda. I'm not sure how it works. But let's just uh, try this out on some enemies. The Watcher. Check. Armstrong. Check. The grenade guys? Probably. I'm not gonna waste ammo on them though. I can just. Oh shit, huh? Oop. <laughs> and lastly, the angler. Look at me. Face me. Check. Also, to reload it, just take your shotgun pellets, come up to the shotgun, and then activate button. Boom, now you're loaded. Last up is the um, flare gun, which is $1,000, so be careful, because uh, despite its hefty pricing, it only has one shot in it, and it isn't even that good, I think, but uh, let, let's just go test it out on some monsters. Take the watcher, uh, fire. Yep, that didn't kill it. Oh, maybe I'm giving it, maybe I'm giving it too little credit. Let me, let me get another one. Eh, aim it. Ah, okay, so that killed it. I can see you can't fire it twice, there's only one bullet. Let's try it out some, on some other enemies. Namely, I want to try it out on the angler. See if it, actually, I want to see if, uh, it's, if the angler is attracted to the flare gun's light. Uh, I'm sorry guys, prior to this recording, I haven't actually used a flare gun because I didn't really like it. Okay, let's see how it works. Okay, the angler isn't attracted to the flare gun's light. I try and kill it. Yeah, no, it's, it's just ineffective. I'm sure if you hit the angler, actually, you can kill it, but... If you want to kill the angler, just use a grenade. It's so much easier. And cheaper. Alright, now let's learn about the loot and their selling prices. First off are the least... The, the three least expensive items in the game. The small banana, which sells for $14. The small cola, which sells for $18. And oil paper, which sells for $25. The next three items uh, are these. The ducky, which sells for $32. The cup, which sells for $35. And the big banana, which sells for $44. Next three, these. The big cola, which sells for $49. The boombox, which plays music and sells for $100. You can only sell a boombox if it's in a backpack, and then you sell the backpack that contains the boombox, by the way. And the Golden Statue, which sells for $110. And the last three items are the Pink Gem, which spawns specifically right here in the Angler Dungeon. It sells for $150. The Gold Bar, which sells for $169. Nice. And of course, the Golden Egg, which sells for $250, which is, as discussed earlier in the video, found being guarded by the bird at the bird's nest. Alright, now that we've learned about the enemies, the items, and all the loot, I'm going to be guiding you around all the areas. More specifically, just like the dungeons.
First off, just out of spawn is this dungeon. Small, no threats except for landmines, contains small cola, small banana, big cola, and toilet paper. Nothing special. Heading past the Watcher, and going over to the right, we have the dungeon that I like to call the Rock Dungeon. Threats here are the Bomb Guy, Landmine, and also Arm Guy. Hi. Arm, arm strong? Arm guy? You know, the rock guy. Loot here includes... Golden bar. Stanley cup. Small banana. Toilet paper. There's arm strong. Hi. Ow, shit. Uh... Small cola, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Uh, big cola. The golden statue. And I think that's about it. There's a teleporter right here that can use to teleport home, but before you teleport home, I'd recommend heading over here. Where you can find an extra big cola. And heading down here is a little treasure stash full of uh, mediocre items. The best items you can get from here are the toilet papers, as they sell for 25 each. That sells for 18, and that sells for 14. So, just grab the toilet paper. Progressing past the angler... ...brings you over here. To the angler dungeon. Threats here include the angler, if it, like, follows you in here. The Watcher. I think there's an arm strong up in this upper section, but it's not around right now. And down over there, as we'll see in a bit, uh, while I'm discussing the loot, there will be the walking bombs and landmines. Loot includes big cola, golden bar, small cola, rubber ducky, Toilet paper. I'll just progress through here to show you how you, you know, get through. There's some loot down here. New item. Big banana is also here. Heading up here. This is the, uh, probably one of the more dangerous areas. As you can see, here's the walking bombs. Yep, there's a teleporter right there. Oh, let me just not get blown up. Yep, that's good. Uh, the golden statue. Let's do it. Uh, the Stanley Cup. Uh, more of the same stuff around here. And heading out here, this is like the main loot area, there's no threats in here except for lava. Here is the gem. It's a little bit overhyped since it's the third best selling. When there's like two gold bars in here and the gold bars sell for more than this. But you know, it's, it's a nice extra find to add on. And heading through here, there's an extra golden statue. So that's just about it for the loot. If you go back to the top, there's like a another like splitting path but i never go down that splitting path so you shouldn't either because it's like it's basically just a death trap where armstrong's gonna corner you and murk you and there's like barely any good loot in there so now that we know pretty much everything there is to know i'm going to show you how i get one thousand dollar scavs pretty much guaranteed with only a singular backpack and nothing else. So you're basically going to be making $950 profit. Anyways, let's go. Come over into this dungeon and grab the big cola from over here. Basically, the main loot you're going to want to be getting is the big cola and anything that sells for more than the big cola. Sneak past the angler. Just 
again to the entrance here. There's the Armstrong. Alright, yep, rotate that corner. Come over here, we're gonna be heading back up to over there in a second. Put that in there. And that there. Armstrong's tweaking a little bit, so we should be fine to just go grab this golden bar. This golden bar. I get down here. Pause. Head on over here. Down here. Grab this big cola. Run over here and get this big cola. Get this golden statue. Get these two big colas. Sorry if it's dark. You're uh, supposed to know how to navigate through here. It appears I'm full up on, on stuff, so uh, I think I did my job a little too good, even. <laughs> Anyways, you're gonna wanna just grab this gem and then come on over here. This. Now, head back to the teleporter. And just zap your way on out. After that, you'll be spawned back up here. Head over to the selling area. Stat you in and put your head back in. And then just sell. Push the buttons. And boom, you got your $1,000 scav. Also, I think they might have patched the game to where you can't sell a boombox anymore. Can you hold on? We already secured the $1,000 scab, but just to make sure... Okay, yeah, you can't actually sell the box anymore. I thought you could, but I guess not. They patched it. Yeah, that is still a $1,000 scab, though, so we take what we get. Anyways, uh, yeah. That's about it for this guide. I hope you learned and can now become a professional uh, animal of the company, hence the name Animal Company. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe, because it took me a little bit to get all this information. And uh, I might see you Friday for when this game gets updated again. Uh, yeah, bye.